I sent a message to a friend two hours ago asking if we could meet today, and she still hasn't replied. I think she doesn't want to see me. Oh my god, I'm very sad and angry. What if she doesn't like me? If she doesn't reply me today, I'm going to write to her that we can't see each other anymore, or at least I will punish her by not answering her texts. My friend hasn't replied my text for 10 hours. I think she's probably busy with something else or she forgot to answer. No problem, it can happen to anyone. I will go for a walk in park instead, and when she answers, we can plan to meet another day. Which one do you connect with more? In this video, we'll learn what to do in these kind of situations. Welcome back to the second session of Excessive Anxiety Treatment with Easy Mind Therapy. Now that you are watching this video, I assume you've worked on the tasks from the first video of this treatment. Good work, my friends. Today, you'll learn more about what CBT is. We'll also go through what a worry diary is and how you can use one. You'll learn what positive assumptions about worry are and begin identifying your own assumptions. By the time you finish this video, you should have already started working with your worry diary and have a better understanding of your own positive assumptions about worry. So are you ready? Let's dive in. Our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors influence each other. How we think about something that happens affects how we feel about it and how we behave in the situation, like the example we showed at the beginning of the video. The situation was the same, but how you think about the situation affects what happens next. We can quickly get caught in positive and negative spirals. A positive spiral is characterized by thoughts, emotions, and behaviors interacting in a way that has a positive effect on you, whereas a negative spiral is the opposite. If, as in the example I showed, you deal with the situation by overanalyzing, it's likely that you'll continue to think that your friend doesn't want to spend time with you. In the long run, you might distance yourself from the person more and more as your thoughts and feelings become increasingly negative, and a negative spiral has been created. When we work with Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, we try to create positive spirals. Since thoughts, emotions, and behaviors influence each other, we can change the whole spiral by changing one of the parts. By learning more about your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, while learning skills to manage whatever causes you difficulties, you'll be able to stop negative spirals and hopefully start positive ones. We'll start by examining your thoughts. In order to change something, we need to start by curiously examining what it is we want to change. If we just change things without first investigating, we run the risk of making changes that won't be very helpful. To explore your worries, keep a worry diary. This diary will help us gain a better picture of when you worry, what you worry about, and whether there are any patterns to your worry. We'll start by going through some instructions for the diary. You don't have to write down every single worry, just a few. Try to describe your worries briefly. It makes it easier for you to identify your patterns. Make a point of noting down your worries three or four times a day, and try to spot the physical signs of worrying. At times when you notice that your anxiety is getting stronger, Ask yourself what you are worried about. If you don't find any such pattern and when you feel anxious, you can set an alarm to remind yourself to fill in the worry diary instead. In this case, write down what you're worried about whenever the alarm goes off. Try to record your worries at slightly different times each day, making sure to include both weekdays and weekends. Fill in your worry diary as close to the event as possible, preferably in the moment. Of course, you don't have to cancel a call to note something in your diary, but make the entry when the call ends naturally instead of waiting until the evening. We forget more easily than we think. This means that you need to carry your diary with you wherever you go, and for this reason, it could be wise to write your diary in something you already usually carry with you, such as your phone. If you forget to add to diary during a day, it's better to skip that day altogether than to try to fill it in afterwards. You should also assign a number to describe how strong the anxiety you felt was in the moment. O corresponds to no anxiety, 5 corresponds to moderate anxiety, and 10 corresponds to very strong anxiety. Don't think too much about the number, go with your first instinct. Here's an example of a worry diary. It contains the day, time, situation, worrisome thoughts, and level of anxiety. Number 1, time Tuesday, 7.15. Situation, eating breakfast. Worrisome thoughts. What if I miss something I was supposed to do by 8? Then I'll probably get fired. Level of anxiety. 6. 2. Time, Tuesday, 11.30. Situation. Replying to an email from the boss. Worrisome thoughts. Did I put the wrong name in the email? Uh, how embarrassing. Level of anxiety. 4. 
Three, time, Tuesday, 19 o'clock. Situation. Receive a text message from the bank. Worrisome thoughts. What if I missed an invoice and get an overdue payment notice? Then I won't be able to get a mortgage. Level of anxiety. Five. Four, time, Wednesday, four o'clock. Situation. Wake up. Worrisome thoughts. What if I overslept and missed the train? Level of anxiety. Eight. Now it's time to start filling in your own worry diary. Remember, write down three, four thoughts each day. Make entries for several days and include both weekdays and holidays. Keep them brief. Write down your worries once you get them or as soon as possible afterwards. Use your anxiety as a signal for worry. Carry your diary with you wherever you go. Don't return to previous entries and change them. A common question that arises for people exploring their anxiety is which thoughts are about real problems and which are more about imagined hypothetical problems. We can solve real problems, but not hypothetical problems because they're about things that might happen in the future. We cannot solve problems that do not yet exist. Some examples of actual problems over which you have some control are the petrol light is on, what if I run out of gas on the way, and I left work a bit later today, what if I miss the bus. These kinds of problems can be solved. Some examples of hypothetical problems that cannot be solved are what if my partner meets someone else and leaves me, and what if it rains on my holiday. Now it is time for the next exercise. Review your worry diary after a few days. Identify a few different things that you worry about and decide whether they are real or hypothetical problems. You can use two questions. One, does the problem exist in reality or is it a problem that might arise in the future? Two, do you have any control over the situation? If the problem doesn't exist here and now, or if you have no control over the situation, then no problem can be solved. Most of us who worry also see benefits from our worry. If we have spent a lot of time and energy on something, it's only natural that we try to view what we've been doing in a positive light. We can describe this as having positive assumptions about worry. If we have positive assumptions about worry, it can be difficult to dare to let go of it. Let's look at some common positive assumptions. One example for positive assumption is, my worries motivate me. People who have this assumption may think that it is their anxiety that helps them get started on things that they might otherwise have postponed. Maybe they feel motivated to study because of anxious thoughts like, what if I haven't revised enough for the exam? Or maybe they put in the effort at work because of anxious thoughts like, what if I miss something important and get fired? Another example for positive assumption is, my anxiety helps me avoid negative events. For people who have this assumption, worry offers some kind of protection against negative events. If you've been worrying about something for a long time and nothing bad has happened, your brain might assume that you've been kept safe because of your worrying. If you often have thought thoughts like, if I hadn't worried so much before the flight, we might have crashed, or I did well on the interview because I worried about it so much beforehand, you are experiencing this assumption. Example of positive assumption. My anxiety helps me avoid negative emotions. If you believe you can offset disappointment by presuming things will go badly anyway, you may be experiencing this assumption. People who have this assumption assume that they are more prepared for difficult situations if they have worried about them in advance. The assumption means that you think your worry is a positive thing because it helps you deal with the negative emotions that could arise if something bad happened. Example of positive assumption. I'm a better problem solver because of my anxiety. People with this assumption believe that worry helps them solve problems and prepare for difficult situations. If you have thoughts like, if I think a lot about the problems in my relationship, I can come up with solutions faster, or what should we do if it rains on vacation? You may have this assumption. This assumption means that you think you can avoid problems by simply thinking about them enough. Positive assumption. Being anxious is a positive personality trait. This assumption means that worry is interpreted as a sign of care, concern, responsibility, and ambition. If you have this assumption, you may think thoughts like, if I didn't care, I wouldn't worry, or I think about work because it's important to me. This assumption also includes thoughts like, it's because of my worry that I never forget anything important. Did you recognize yourself in any of these descriptions of positive assumptions? Your assumptions could, of course, be different from the ones that we've gone through here. Write down your positive assumptions. 
Now, let's summarize what we learned in this video. Our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors interact. How we think about something affects what we feel and how we behave in a situation. In order to change something, you need to start by curiously examining what you want to change. One way to examine your concerns is to keep a worry diary. If you've devoted a lot of time and energy to your anxiety, it's natural that you try to find positive aspects of what you've devoted yourself to. If you have such positive assumptions about the concern, it can be difficult to let go of it. As you learn more about your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors while learning skills to deal with what's hard for you, you'll be able to stop negative spirals and hopefully start positive ones instead. Your tasks for this week are 1. Start filling in your worry diary. 2. Review your worry diary after a couple of days. Identify a few different things you're worried about and decide what's a real or hypothetical problem. 3. Identify your own positive assumptions. Which assumptions do you identify with? Thank you for joining us in today's journey through the second session of our Excessive Anxiety Treatment video series. If today's insights sparked a light in you, please show your support by hitting like, sharing this video, and subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to ring that notification bell too. It's your golden ticket to never missing out on our upcoming adventures in mental wellness. Remember, each day is a new opportunity to grow, to flourish, and to step into the best version of yourself. Keep pushing boundaries, keep nurturing your mind, and most importantly, keep smiling. This is your time, your space, and your path to a healthier life. Until next time, take care.